right, we're coming up on the hour here. Are you ready to get started, Michael? This seems like a perfect time to get started. Awesome. Okay, well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Baird and I'm gonna be co-presenting our session today with my colleague, Michael Healy, who's also here. Um, so Michael and I are both consultants with Columinate and we assist co-op clients in different aspects of their organization. My focus is on helping general managers um, with their operation and with their financial performance. And as all of you know, uh, right now is a unprecedented time for our general managers. There's unprecedented disruption in both our operations and in our financial planning. So I am really looking forward to this conversation today um, in the hopes that we can come out of the discussion with a renewed focus and some renewed inspiration for how we can be the best possible support network um, and the best possible cheerleaders for our co-op leaders right now. Thanks for getting us going there, Brittany. Um, so I'm Michael Healy. I'm here in beautiful Burlington, Vermont. Um, I uh, am part of the Seabuild team within the Columinate uh, Co-op. And uh, I have the great fortune of working with a, a number of amazing boards and managers around the country uh, who I continue to learn from. I'm really grateful for that and for the work that all of you good folks are doing in your communities. Um, one of the things that we hope today is that if you're a board member or board leader, you'll leave here with some ideas about how you can support your manager during this uh, wild time we're living in. And if you're a manager, maybe you'll leave here with a way to answer the question. If, if a board member asks you, how can I help? Um, and if you're one of those other amazing people that support boards and managers, we hope you'll take some of this and share it with folks who you think can, can make good use of it. Um, as we get started, I want to just make sure that you all are aware. I want to introduce my um, friend and colleague, our friend and colleague, Leslie Watson, uh, who's going to be here uh, keeping track of the questions for us. Um, and Leslie, if you want to do a quick hello and, and I'll let folks know you're here. Hi, everybody. Yep, I'm going to go off screen in just a second, but I'll be present. You'll watch for chats for me if you have a question about techn technology. And I'll also be trying to track questions that folks have so I can um, direct them to Brittany and Michael during the webinar. So thanks. thank you, Leslie. Thanks, Leslie. Um, All right, Michael, you can go ahead and advance the slide. All right. So I see that some of you have already taken the initiative to start introducing yourself in the chat box. Um, we were absolutely blown away by the amount of interest in this discussion today. Um, looks like we have about 180 or so of you um, on the line right now, and, and several more will probably be joining us over the next few minutes. So just take a moment and go ahead there, find your chat box if you want to share your name, your co-op, and where you're located. The, the script from the chat panel will be available as part of the follow-up resources from this presentation. So anything you guys want to share in there, you'll be able to check back to and reference um, later on. Just give you a moment to kind of see the names as they're filtering in. It's pretty amazing how many people are showing up for this conversation. Really, I love seeing names of folks that I get to work with around the country. Thank you all for being here. It's really makes me smile to know you're here with us. Yeah, I just saw my home co-op Weaver's Way checking in. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So today, the question that we intend to explore is how can you in your role as a director be the best possible support to your general manager during the pandemic? Um, in my experience supporting GMs over the past couple months, I have observed the incredible stress that general managers are under um, from having to completely overhaul their operation overnight. And in some cases like night after night as things change and continue to change rapidly um, to unprecedented disruption in 
distribution and in staffing. I have GMs that have turned over, in some cases, 25 to 30% of their staff. Um, as I'm sure you are all experiencing, there's an element of disruption in our personal lives. So we have GMs that have kids that are home from school, spouses that are maybe being laid off, and they're coming to work every day cognizant of the risk to their personal health, their family's health, and the health and safety of their staff and their communities. It is a sure superhuman ask what general managers have to do right now in order to rise to the occasion of this moment. And it's extremely isolating being in that position. So, um, you know, that is why Michael and I wanted to bring this discussion out into the open today with the hope that maybe we can, as a cooperative community, focus on alleviating some of that stress for our GMs. Um, as we move through our content today, if you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the chat box. Again, Leslie is going to be helping us monitor all those questions as they come in. We'll try to respond to them in real time. We should also have a few moments towards the end of our session today uh, to get to any questions that we haven't addressed. And we'll also be monitoring the, uh, the log from the chat panel and we can follow up again after the session. Feel free to share examples and insights too, um, anything that you think is gonna be helpful to the other co-ops that are here today. Uh, we thought it might be uh, interesting to get started with just a read on how folks are feeling. I'm gonna go ahead and launch a poll. It is an anonymous poll. So you'll see this poll appear on your screen. We wanna know, how well is your board doing in supporting your GM? So maybe you feel like we are doing awesome, we are on top of it. Maybe it's more like a yellow light, we could be doing better, we could be doing more. Or maybe you're feeling like your board needs a lot of work, getting on the same page and getting focused on this practice of support. Let's take another moment or so as answers filter in. The poll does pop up in a separate window. I see someone saying they're not seeing it. So just check that it didn't pop up behind your screen. All right, well, the results are in. 32% of the folks that answered feel like green light, they're doing really great. Sounds like the majority of you, 64%, feel like we could really be doing better. And I'm happy to see that only six of you feel like you need a lot of work. So um, it's inspiring that you've all kind of shown and are present in thinking about this in a proactive way for your GM. And I've had GMs, uh, some of your GMs, tell me that they are so appreciative that their board is making time for this call today. So Michael's going to start by giving us an overview. Thanks, Michael. Thank you all for responding there and giving us a sense of how you're starting the day out of the conversation here. Um, and, and I want to say with that in mind, Brittany and I are um, framing this for ourselves as a conversation. We, we started talking about this a couple of weeks ago and saw the need. And we're hoping that through our conversation today, you have some stuff. So whether you think you are in that green light category or yellow or red, no matter what, you, you hear something today that might be useful. One of the things that we um, want to start from is understanding that, that supporting the manager is not the only thing that a board should be doing now. We aren't trying to say that. We want to make sure that you all as board members or as, as other folks here recognize there's a lot on the board's plate also, um, and we're going to address some of that. We're just we're 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 introducing this idea that this is at least one of the important things for boards to do right now, uh, that and maybe even critically important. Um, and so as we talked about how we might be useful, Brittany and I talked about how we might be useful for all of you who are doing that great work in your communities. Um, we thought that uh, we we came up with kind of seven categories of of um, content of, of of ways that we can think about this work. So I'm gonna quickly introduce these, these seven and then we're gonna spend a few minutes on each one going through. 
And I want to let you know also that uh, after this workshop today, there will be this, this um, information and a handout that will be on our website. And you'll also be able to go back and listen to the recording of the presentation. It'll be posted in a couple of days. Um, and we hope that you'll take this back, like I said, to your co-ops, to your boards, uh, and have these conversations. Um, we are not at all trying to say, Brittany and I, that we have all the answers here. We, we just are trying to encourage you all to think about how this makes sense for your co-ops and your communities. So here's, here's, here's the outline of what we're going to cover today. Um, and this is, again, thinking, what, what is the board's work here in, in supporting the manager? First, staying steady, that if you as a board can keep doing your work, keep on the path that you're on, that makes such a difference for the manager. We will, we will again, as I said, we'll get into a little, little bit more of the detail of these as we go through. Next, staying informed, making sure that as individuals and as a whole board, you know what's going on in the world and you're also anticipating um, or paying attention to what might be coming next. Uh, so that you are you are understanding the context for all the decisions and actions that your manager is making. Staying ready, making sure that as individuals and as a board, you are on your toes, that, that at whatever moment's notice where you're being called to make a decision or take an action, you're ready for that. Fourth, uh, I, I always feel like this might be the most important one, uh, but these really aren't in any order, but the idea of appreciating uh, that, that that hopefully we have that habit anyway, but it's even more important now. And we're gonna talk about two different ways of thinking about what appreciation means uh, in this context. The fifth one we're gonna, we're gonna spend a little bit time on is uh, what, what we can think about in sort of the, the backside of this. So, so there's the what we can do to support, and there's what we might want to avoid that could make the GM's job harder. So we're gonna spend a few minutes there. The, the question that, that really came out of that, that inspired this is that question of what can we do to help? What can I do to help? And so along with these general guidelines, we're going to um, offer a few suggestions based on what we've seen work uh, for other boards or other co-ops. And the last one we're going to spend a little time on is the board's role in communicating to your member owners uh, and hopefully thinking about maybe a little bit differently uh, in, this, in this critical time, how you might go about doing that. Um, so as we go through, I encourage you to listen to each of these sections uh, as both how it applies to the board as a whole and how it applies to you as an individual director, assuming that's your role, um, or, or how, if you're, again, if you're a manager, how you might explain it to the whole board or to an individual director. So these, the framing is, is we're going back and forth here. Um, anything else, Brittany, that you want to add in terms of the introduction, the overview of what we're about to dive into? I think that was great. Thanks, Michael. So as I said, we're going to do this in a conversational manner. Um, and so the first, we're just going through that list. Um, staying steady. Yeah, so staying steady was the first thing that Michael mentioned. And I think it's appropriate as the first thing to start with as a board. Um, Michael talked about that idea of staying steady in the work of governance, staying steady in the work of the board. How do you see that unfolding during this period of time? Um, so the, the idea of staying steady, one is to first start from the perspective of the manager. The, and we're using throughout today, we're using the term manager who you, some people present here are not from food co-ops. You might have, or, or you might have other names for the executive of your organization of your co-op. So this applies uh, across all the different industries. That person is just facing a torrent of new information, of change, of of new requirements, of uh, unexpected crises within this larger crisis, and. Wouldn't it be an amazing gift if the board was not adding to that? Right? If the board was not part of the shift and the change and the tumult, but the board was steady. And so the foundation of everything else that Brittany and I uh, thought about in our, in our preparations here seems like it, it builds on this as a foundation. Um, that I think that if you as a board, you already had a work plan, you already had a schedule of meetings, maintain that. Stick with your plan, follow through on your schedule, whatever's in your annual calendar, um, however you've organized yourselves. 
any changes you make, the manager needs to respond somehow to that, if, if nothing else, to understand it. And that takes away emotional, mental, physical energy that might be uh, better used in other places, or, or, or maybe not even better used, but just used in other places. So in general, the, the beginning place is, what can we do as a board to support our manager? Continue to do our work and to do it well. And there might be some exceptions to that, and we should be understanding that this is not a hard and fast rule to not change anything. Michael, when you say the there might be some exceptions, what sort of adjustments might a board need to make during this time, still under that umbrella of staying steady in the work of governance? Yeah, well, I've I've been I've been checking with the, the boards that I'm working with and and asking that question um, and trying to track what seems to make sense. And so the exceptions don't include stopping functioning, right? It's not, it's not that we're making an exception that we're not gonna function. So the exceptions that I'm hearing that seem to make sense are boards that are still on their steady path, but are making adjustments, mostly where their work interfaces with the manager's work in a way that requires extra energy from the manager. So for example, um, one of the boards I was working with, they were just about to embark on a, on a management board level conversation about the five-year plan, thinking about the future. And they've decided, and in my mind rightfully, to say, you know what, let's not have that conversation right now. It doesn't mean we aren't thinking about the future, but for our manager and our management team to be in that conversation with us just doesn't make sense at the moment. So let's hold that off. In my mind, that was a, that was a reasonable exception to the plan. Um, I was talking to another board and GM, or, or I guess in this case, it was a board president and GM, and, and together they were just puzzling out what kind of adjustments should we make? And, and the manager's response in that case was, you know, the, the regular schedule of monitoring, all those systems are in place, all those, all those employees who help with all that are here. So we don't really need to change that, except maybe the, that ENDS report that was coming due in April that one's a heavier lift. Could we postpone that till later in the year? Mm -hmm. In my mind, that was a, a very reasonable adjustment, right? We had a plan. Here's a piece that was extra, extra hard for the staff and for the manager. Let's postpone that one. Um, I've noticed a couple, um, maybe more than a couple boards that are just adjusting their, their agendas. Um, so generally the board uh, or the, the manager is present at board meetings and to have the agendas just a little bit shorter, the meetings a little bit shorter, um, that that in and of itself makes the manager's life easier. So uh, it sounds like that's one of the key areas of adjustment um, is, are there things the board can do to take a little bit of pressure and create a little bit more space for the end to focus on the operation? Yeah, right, and, and so the, that, I noticed in one some of the comments here, one one board member looked like said we we've canceled all of our board meetings, and in my mind that's an exception to the plan that that may not be the right exception, right? It might be too much, um, but are there ways to adjust those board meetings so that they don't um, make the manager's life harder than it has to be? Right? So can we keep meeting but maybe a little bit less? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I, I guess I, I'll just check. Leslie, were there any um, questions or comments folks had at this point about um, a, adjusting plans or what it means to stay steady? Did you hear anything there? Uh, no, I didn't see anything come up, although um, if people have have one, um, uh, maybe they could put it in the chat right now. Um, someone noted there was a voice recording in the background, but it sounds like it's off, whatever it was, yeah. Um, yeah, I see a note here about a co-op delaying um, the reporting except financial during the pandemic. I, I think of um, looking at reporting calendar, like something that could be a real, uh, that could help the board frame what they should be focusing on or what the GM is focusing on. I imagine it almost like uh, sometimes during expansion planning or during startup mode, you might you know, have an alternate reporting calendar for your GM to function where you're getting maybe less robust information more frequently. One board I spoke with, um, they were anticipating getting the business plan from the manager. The manager said, 
I'm still going to give you the business plan, but it's going to have way less detail in it than it had the last time around. Right? So, so we're not we're not changing the order, we're not changing the timing, but just be ready to accept a, a, a lot less information this time around. And the mm -hmm. board said, "Great, thank you very much." Great. There's one other comment too that um, that you know that kind of relates to the staying steady, but someone just noted they didn't postpone their board elections staying steady on that and so but it actually means there's going to be change coming so I don't know if you want to make a comment about what steady looks like when you have normal turnover on the board well and that is that is what's normal right so that is steadiness that that having board turnover is part of what boards do and so do that well right if that is the board's work and that's what's happening there's I haven't I haven't heard or seen indication that canceling elections helps the manager's job, but that, that, that's not something that makes the manager's job easier. So if it's true in your co-op, that, that, that would make a difference, right? Use your own judgment. Nothing that I say I want to take away from your own judgment, but it seems like, okay, we're, we're having board turnover. Let's make sure we do that well, run the election well, make sure our members are well informed, make sure those new directors are very well oriented to what's going on here. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Staying steady. All right, so I think um, the next point we were gonna talk about is staying informed. Yeah, and, and so this is one where it, I think it has a lot of different nuance in it. And I, I've been really interested, Brittany, to hear your perspective on this uh, as, we, as, we, as we prepare for this. And I'm curious, uh, what, what rises to the surface for you here? What, what do you think is critical? Um, well, you mentioned earlier, Michael, the concept that there is a torrent of information that GMs are scrambling to process right now. Um, I'm sure all of us feel some element of that in our personal life, too, that fatigue from the news feed. Um, and although, you know, I could see why it's attractive, now is really not the time to sort of bury our heads in the sand um, for our co-op directors. So that means paying attention and staying informed about uh, what's happening in the news, what is happening in your state, in our industry, in your operation, so that there's this sense of active listening and attentiveness. Um, it makes the process a lot easier when the GM is coming to the board with operational changes or asks for the board they don't have to spend all that extra time providing the context because the board is paying close attention. Um, and me paying attention to things like the PPP loan or the SBA loan or social distancing regulations for your state. It also means actively listening to your GM's challenges and their rationale for changes that they're making in the store. That is going to put your board in the best position possible to be able to speak with one voice. Not just board holism, we're talking about co-op holism, right? We all are informed about what's happening and we're on the same page. That goes a really long way, I think, to um, helping to reduce the impacts of that feeling of isolation is we're all in this together, paying attention and understanding what the present conditions really hold for our co-ops. Uh, I also think I had a GM um, tell me an anecdote of the board answering questions in a way to the public that actually created some feeling of fracturing. So when members come up to you on the street and they say, hey, why are we closed on Sunday? Or hey, why are you closing early? Or you've been out of flower for two weeks? Staying informed of what challenges your general manager is facing is really going to put you in the best position to make them feel publicly supported and behind everything that's occurring in the co-op. Yeah, you know, that, that idea of staying informed, as you were describing that, Brittany, part of what occurs to me is I think in, in normal times, whatever we think is normal, oftentimes boards count on the manager to be the source of that information. Right. And, and that's a reasonable expectation. Like the manager can say, here's what's going on in the industry. Here's, what's, uh, here's you know, what we're anticipating in terms of changes in the future or some laws we might be paying attention to. And this is a case where 
we might not be able to depend as much uh, because there's so much information and to expect yeah. the manager to be the provider of that might be too much to expect. And so the, the, the back to the fundamental question of how do we support the manager? It's maybe as board members, I'm thinking we're actively out there looking for that information. We're paying attention. I saw one comment from a, a participant here about pay attention to local news, regional news, national news, um, industry news. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's our that's our responsibility now more than ever before. That yeah, I think that's a really uh, great insight. So I, I'm coming to all of these topics from the understanding that GMs are frayed as thin as possible right now. There is such a limit on what, I mean, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back is, you know, has this sort of sense of being looming. So anything your board can do to be proactive rather than, you know, relying on the general manager to take responsibility, for something like keeping the board informed um, about events that are affecting your community is going to just go that extra mile to make them feel like they are, um, not alone in this, right? That there's a board that's fully present in all the current events as they unfold. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's really good. And I'm, I'm noticing uh, a couple of the comments that that um, are coming from from our participants today are are this idea of having information that can be shared with members or the community. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I mean, part of our outline is communicating to members, and mm -hmm. so. If we're going to communicate to members, we'd better be informed first. Right? Yeah. So, so remember all these these seven things that we're talking about today. They they feed in and out of each other, um, but but I think the core and what I'm hearing from you, Brittany, is that that it's that it's a little bit more of an initiative for board members mm -hmm. and, and the board as a whole to go get that information and not expect the manager to be the source of that information. Right, and we are staying informed in an effort to support our manager. Mm -hmm. Not so that we can go out and speak for operations, right? I saw a comment in the chat panel um, that, you know, it's not about, we're not saying in forms so we can tell the GM how to manage the operation, but so that we can really be fully present and supportive in how they're having to address challenges. I, I, maybe it was you, Brittany, who told me there was the story of um, a manager coming to the board with what sounded like a fairly dramatic change in how operations were going to work. And it, it created a, a hard conversation. The board was not ready for that change. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't remember the details of the story, but part of what I think the, the, the staying informed is that we as board members are not gonna be surprised. We're not gonna be caught off guard that if someone comes with a, with a big change, we might say, yeah, we kind of expected that, right? It sounds like that's because of all of what we're hearing, that is not shocking that this is the next stage of the changes. Um, and, and so that part of staying informed is just making sure we're not going to be surprised. We're not going to be caught off guard um, when whatever the next bit of information, you know, again, I'm, I still think we're in this mode of things are changing daily, maybe more than once a day. Um, but we're not mm -hmm. going to be surprised by that. We're going to be we're going to be ready for whatever the, the decisions are that the manager is telling us about. Yep. That, that idea of actively listening to both your community and also to your GM. Yeah, and, and so this, I guess this gets us into our, our um, next piece about just being ready. So so part of being informed is being ready for whatever might be coming at us. Um, and, uh, and Brittany. Uh, what does it mean to be, how can we be both steady and ready? What does that readiness mean as a board? Uh, you know, years ago, um, I remember I learned from my um, colleague, Mark Goring, he would he would talk about being in the ready position and, and he would demonstrate it by you know you're you're on your toes your hands are out you're re you're ready for the ball right it may not come your way but you're ready and for for a for a team to function everybody's got to be on their toes got to be got to be ready and the ball may not come to you and that's okay it doesn't mean it wasn't important to be ready um, so there's there's two ways as I said earlier you know we're thinking about this both as the context of the board as a whole and individual directors. Um, so I, I think of this as universal. Maybe there's someone here who, who hasn't uh, noticed this or paid attention or, or had to experience it, but you know, the, the, the governmental um, PPP loan, the various loans that are part of the, the, the response package out of Congress, 
co-ops and businesses all over the place were, were having to make quick decisions about applying for, for that. Um, the, the board, that's one example of a board, and, and for most of the co-ops I work with, that would be a board level decision, right? Taking on debt. Some co-ops, maybe that is a management level decision. But just be aware of, oh, there may be decisions where the, the authority lies at the board level. The board has to be ready at a moment's notice to make those decisions. You can't, we can't take months uh, in, in, this, in, in this environment to puzzle things out and, and to be ready to make a decision. So that, that's part of it. Um, the other is then as individual directors that we as individuals need to be ready to support the board as a whole in, in moving quickly. Um, so, so again, back to us paying attention, watching the news, anticipating what, what might be coming next. Mm -hmm. From a, like a practical or maybe a technical standpoint, what might it mean for a board to be ready to quickly make decisions? What should boards be thinking about? Well, the, the one that has come up um, for several of the boards that I'm working with that seems most critical from, from my perspective is um, you we're not in a position right now, at least for some decisions, that we can wait until the next board meeting to make a decision. That might be a month away. Mm -hmm. um, or for the, the, the folks here who mentioned they've canceled their board meetings, that might be many months away. It's just hard to imagine. Um, and so every co-op I, that I work with, and I assume this is universal, has some sort of, of uh, rule in their bylaws or in their board level policies about action without a meeting, making decisions outside of a regular board meeting. So being ready in my mind would be every person on that board and in particular the board leader knows what those rules are and that we're ready to, to carry those that, that process out at a moment's notice. Um, so if it requires uh, some of some boards I work with, it requires complete participation that every director has to be present if you're gonna take an action without a meeting, whatever it is, um, know what those rules are. Don't wait till tomorrow to figure that out, right? This is stuff hopefully you figured out yesterday. And if you didn't do it yesterday, today's a good day. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I think at a whole board level, that's, that's the key. Um, at an individual level, I think being ready, uh, I, I heard a, a story from one co-op where when the manager uh, needed the board to make a decision about the PPP loan, there were a couple of board members who were just out of touch, who, who just weren't responding. And I think, oh, that's a part of readiness of as individuals, we should make sure that we are in contact, that, that our board leader or our manager can get in touch with us quickly and we will respond um, quickly. That, that this is not in, in olden days, uh, BC, before coronavirus, we might have been able to wait several days or a week in between communications and that might have mm -hmm. been normal, but now I don't think we can. And so I think individuals have to be on their toes, ready to, to get the call and respond. Yeah, I think when I think of readiness, I almost have this visualization of like the National Guard. It's like, hey, there is something that requires our whole community to come together and just be present and ready to act when they're when they're called upon. And just that sense um, that your GM knows the board is ready and fully present to act makes them feel more secure, right? Reduces that feeling of isolation. Um, in that example you gave, Michael, I can only imagine being a GM having to track down board members and thank them to like check their email because you know PPP funds are going to run out and I need it tomorrow. So um, I think this is another way that can reduce that ask on the general manager by being proactively ready uh, for whatever it is that they might need. You know, the PPP loan is just one that has come up. A month ago, I would not have anticipated that was going to be a decision that you know, like it, it never occurred to me. I have no idea what the next decision might be that's going to come to our boards. Uh, so I, I, I'm not. I, I can't see the future. I'm just mm -hmm. assuming there might be something else. And and so uh, I hope that every director assumes the same thing. And and it's like being on call. Like we're just we're going to be ready to respond. Yeah, I think of it too as just putting that mantra of the duty of governance. I think oftentimes as a board member, we focus a lot on that fiduciary duty, but this is like a, a different type of duty in the same way that our GMs are being asked and called to you know, be essential heroes in a way that we couldn't have imagined. In another sense, our boards are being asked to be ready and present in a way that, as you said, is a deviation 
from just a month ago, right? That we couldn't have imagined. So just bringing that sense of duty to the forefront and how your board culture is operating under these unique circumstances. Yeah, yeah, good. Michael and Brittany? This is yeah. Leslie. I just wanted to jump in with a couple of comments or questions from the sure. chat panel. Um, the first one was, I just noted, this was actually a, a comment, um, but someone mentioned um, 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 actually having their resolutions for the PPP ready in advance. So that kind of anticipatory piece. So I don't know if you have any other examples of things like that that come to mind that you wanted to speak to, but just to lift that one up. Um, as a comment that came in. And then the other one is um, someone is asking about, you know, what, what about the situation when board members, when we a board member has uh, contracts COVID or something like that, like thinking about how mm -hmm. are you going to actually be ready when things can happen to board members themselves as a unit that can really impact functioning. So just wanted to raise that one as a question if you had a comment about that at all. What do you think, Brittany? Uh, uh, let's I, take that last one first. Well, I relate it to how I've seen general managers respond to preparedness planning. Um, you know, part of staying ready is having a plan. And so just as your GMs uh, are putting together preparedness plans for if they get sick or their staff gets sick or, you know, any of the myriad of things that could come up in the operation, maybe part of staying ready is as a board having, you know, just some time on the agenda to discuss the board preparedness plan, right? Um, there's also an aspect of staying ready that uh, maybe requires your board to think more about, does everyone have Zoom training? Does everybody have internet access? You know, does everybody have access to the right emails and the right file drive? So just carving out a little bit of time to think proactively about board readiness um, for your governance work. I think that's a really good insight, Leslie. Well, I like that, Brittany, very much like from that manager perspective, how do we manage board readiness, just like our, our, our managers are, are managing the operational readiness um, and mm -hmm. thinking through the scenarios. Um, yeah, and so again, I don't wanna try to insert my own judgment in, into someone else's board work, um, but it does seem like it's a great question and to think through in advance, how will we respond if one of us uh, gets sick from this virus, right? And, and that just reminds me, I, we're, Brittany and I are talking about this from, a, from an organizational level and organizational health, but What's behind it is there's there's real humans here who are who are ailing, dying in our communities, and and so I don't want to diminish any of that, you know. But that but, but part of what we're just focusing on is okay. There is a structure. There's an organization here. How do we take care of the health of that organization? Um, the uh, let's see, Leslie, there was another question or comment right before the one about being ready. What was that? Well, this idea of maybe. Um, um, a comment about a, a board member share, sharing that they actually had their resolutions ready in advance for when the PPP funding opened. I think it was something like that. So yeah. like uh, extra readiness, you might say. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and I think most of what we're talking about here is probably good practice anytime. Um, and so when a board is coming to make a decision, if, the re if it's a fairly straightforward decision and the resolution is written out and what we're asking is, do we agree to this resolution? that can save a lot of time and energy at a board level rather than hash out the language when we're all sitting together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I think that's a great example of how can we make the board's work easier in the service of making the manager's work easier. So again, the, the focus of this workshop was supporting the manager, but if we make that board work easier, simpler, more straightforward for the board, that'll translate into then the, the manager will benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, uh, on the side of my screen here, I'm, I'm just, I'm tracking sort of like so many great comments and, and questions from folks. I really appreciate that. Um, and I wish uh, I could be with you for days on end to have this conversation. Um, we don't get to do that. We're get, um, gonna just keep moving through some of the topics here. But again, I just wanna emphasize the goal is that you take this conversation back to your board, back to your co-op. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, Brittany, as we're moving through, uh, I, again, I, I so much have, have valued your perspective uh, coming into this conversation from that sense of um, you love the GMs you work with and, and you've been thinking how to, how to help them. And so when you're thinking about that, what do you think boards can do to appreciate uh, the GM and, and through them also appreciate the staff? Yeah, this is a big question. Um, it's a million dollar question. It's also the reason that uh, we wanted to do this. So I was like, Michael's like, well, why wouldn't you do this? I was like, this is out of love for my GMs. Cause it's like, 
what people are being asked to do is so superhuman and so isolating that when I think of how to how to truly appreciate what GMs are doing for their communities and for their staff, I think appreciation has a couple different meanings. So appreciation is saying thank you. It's expressing real gratitude for the self-sacrifice that's involved right now in this leadership. Um, but it's also about having empathy and understanding for the situation and the challenges that your GM is facing. Um, I actually talked to a general manager just yesterday that is a Vietnam War veteran. And he told me that uh, this scenario is reactivating his, his dormant PTSD and he cannot sleep. And just hearing that and holding that and understanding there is a real human impact. There's a mental health risk for your GM. This is not the time for your GM to feel isolated or challenged or for your co-op leadership to feel fractured. That is the greatest gift you can bring to your co-op right now is to rally around your GM and love them and support them because it's a real lonely job. I mean, in some ways we're all feeling really isolated, but maybe we get to be home and feel safe right? This idea of having to go out and to potentially risk your health and your family's risk is a really significant source of stress um, for GMs. There was another GM I asked when we were putting this series together, if there was one thing that you really wanted your board to know, what would it be? And it was just acknowledgement that we're operating under the most extreme set of circumstances. From his perspective, that's what would make him feel the best is really just that acknowledgement from his board. And I think you'll hear that as threads of all the topics that we've just covered and some other ones of in all of our interactions with the GM coming from a place of appreciation, empathy and acknowledgement um, that they are under a tremendous amount of stress is really gonna help them feel supported. So, they're saying thank you, right? Clearly saying thank you, both in our interpersonal relationship with our GM, but also in our role as an employer, right? We are a, we're an employer of an employee that is being asked to go above and beyond what they ever dreamed imaginable in their job description, I'm guessing. Um, so it's possible there's some gestures of appreciation that might be program. Um, maybe you've already done some for your general manager. Uh, one thing I think to be cognizant of, cognizant of is if your staff are getting hazard pay, check in to make sure that your GM has access to hazard pay too. I actually had a GM ask me like, is it appropriate for me to get hazard pay too? And they just needed someone to say, oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> it's definitely appropriate for you to get hazard pay too. So let's not let our GMs be out there feeling like they need to martyr themselves and instead, you know, really be able to rally around them. Mm -hmm. um, there was another example someone shared with me yesterday of uh, a board that raised their personal funds to donate to the employee house charge accounts. So that, just that simple gesture of when staff go to have lunch in the store, that there was a donation on their account that they could spend, um, you know, expanding this idea of appreciation and gratitude beyond just the GM, but to the staff and your, and your cooperative community as a whole. And so there's that interpersonal aspect of uh, privately thanking and appreciating but as I think Michael referenced before, this idea of backing up the delegation of your GM, there's a place to be publicly thanking your GM and publicly thanking your staff in a way that makes them feel like the whole community is really rallying around them. We're behind you 100%. We don't just appreciate you, we believe in you. And shouting out to the community that we believe in our GM, we believe in our staff. That's the type of support that we're talking about. And I think the bottom line is your GM is in a very uncomfortable place. Your staff are in a very uncomfortable place. But as a board, you have some power to help bring them comfort through just acknowledgement, appreciation, and empathy, and beginning all of your, you know, putting all of your governance work 
through that lens first right now is going to help make a, a serious impact um, on the morale of your team who's out there kicking butt. Nice. Um, yeah, Brittany, thank you for raising my awareness of this idea of appreciation being two things, right? It's, it is that thank you, um, but it's also the, uh, the empathy part of appreciation, appreciating what somebody is going through. And um, maybe that's something that as board members, we can help each other remember that and do that. Because um, we're each of us are, uh, as board members, we're also under these stresses and, and fears and worries, and we might forget to be our best selves in a given moment. And so maybe we can help each other um, be a great employer for that manager and really do appreciate the work that they're doing. And if any of you have any examples of really great creative ways that you figured out to appreciate your staff or your team, please, please feel free to share those in the chat panel. I'd love to hear more about them. And I'll just jump in to say there are a number of great ideas. Some people are typing to all panelists and attendees, and some of them are typing just to all panelists. So some of the great ideas are only showing up for us, but just a reminder that the chat um, the chat record will be part of what we share after the, um, the um, uh, webinar is over. Gotcha. Thank you for that reminder, Leslie. There's just that little drop down panel so you can select to go to all panelists and attendees to share with the full group. Yeah, that'd be great because I'm, I'm a little jealous that I don't get to read all these good ideas as we're going. I can, I can tell <laughs> that they're there. Uh, so hopefully you all are sharing with each other. Um, I want to keep us moving, though. I'm, I want to honor your time. You all are, are given an hour of your day to this. Um, and so, um, Brittany, can we move on to this um, sort of the, the backdoor part of this conversation? Sure. So how do we stay steady and informed and ready and appreciate our GM without getting in the way and making their job more difficult? Uh, and, and I do think, yeah, that, I, I think of that question as a critically important one. And I think it's, as I said, it's the backdoor question. And so the front door question is how do we support? How do we how do we make that job easier, better? Um, but this one is is also important because there are some things that we might do out of the goodness of our hearts in a well-meaning way, but actually make the manager's job harder. And so we want to raise a little bit of awareness here of that. Um, one of the things that we might have been used to BC before coronavirus is that we could go to our manager with questions, suggestions, whenever they came up. And it could be that that's not helpful now, that it might be time for us as individual directors to not send that email that just crossed our minds or not send that new good resource to the manager, um, that it's just too much information. Um, I did talk to one director, a board leader, who, as we were talking about this together, which is what made me think of it, um, she said, oh, I was, I had this great information. I thought it was really useful. And she said, and I now need to think about how to make it available to the manager without actually sending it to the manager. So mm -hmm. I don't know how you all will do that, but I think it's worth considering. Um, I think that um, if you have information, one of the, the things to consider is, can it wait until the board meeting? Can it be something where if, you, if board members have questions or comments or suggestions that they go through the board president and in that one monthly meeting where the president and manager are together, they kind of go over this stuff and see which ones really filter up to the level of, okay, they need a full board response. Um, I think that uh, the other piece that board members are doing, again, from that place of, of our role of oversight and wanting to do the best we can for our co-op is we're asking for a lot of information from our managers, right? We wanna know all the details that support a particular decision. And it might be a time where we have to accept fewer details. It doesn't mean we shouldn't ask the question. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be providing good oversight, but we might not expect uh, or demand as much detailed information as we, we could have in, in other circumstances. We're, we're gonna be living with some uncertainty. And this is a place where some level of that uncertainty shared among board and manager um, is probably reasonable. Um, I also think that uh, when we're asking those questions, this goes back to what you were saying before, Brittany, about appreciation. If we ask our questions about why things are the way they are, or why that decision was made, or what are the implications of that decision? If we ask those questions before we say, thank you very much, you're doing an amazing piece of work for us here and we know you're under a lot of stress. That makes the job harder, right? Just so softening, softening the question can make it easier to answer the question. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that 
if you don't already have a clear sense of delegated authority, what the manager is or isn't allowed to decide, that's making the job so much harder. So this might be a place to really clarify. Have you given enough authority to the manager to get out there and make the decisions that need to be made on a day-to-day -day basis? Don't make the manager come checking for approvals or, or um, waiting for the board to debate and deliberate for, for a week while the manager's deciding, as Brittany said, about what are essentially life and death decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think those are probably the key elements of, of how do we not make the job harder? Yeah, um, just like you said, Michael, making sure the GM knows what power is delegated to them. What I'm finding is because these situations, these decisions like close the store one day a week or you know close the store to the public, these huge operational decisions feel so big that GMs are still bringing them to the board level for conversation. And I think there's an important element of your board being aware too. What is your GM, what does your GM need, right? If, if that is a decision that has been delegated to the GM, they're bringing it to the board because they want your support. They want to know you say we're behind you 100%. You do what you need to do. Like we're going to back you up in the community and publicly and any to anybody who pulls us and asks us on the street why you've made a decision, we're going to back you up. So I think there's an element of knowing um, is your GM asking you for permission or did they just really need someone else to help support them to feel like they're not making all of these tough calls on an island alone. And you had mentioned this idea of being comfortable living with a, a certain level of uncertainty. I think that's something we're all trying to get comfortable with in our lives in different ways. And just know that things are not gonna be black and white. So there's gonna be a lot of gray area. I uh, had a GM ask me, should I you know, make this operational change? And they were looking for a yes or no answer. And my answer to them is, you need to do whatever you need to do because I don't know what it feels like to be you. I don't know how your staff feel. I don't know what it's like in your community. So this idea that we're not gonna have all of the answers and your GM does not have all the answers either. They're just trying to make the best decisions they could make with the information they have in the moment. That information might be different tomorrow. So uh, that concept of filtering all of that interaction through a lens of appreciation and support and just acknowledgement that no one knows the answer right now. We're just trying to get better at living and responding in the moment in a way that makes us all feel supported. And so if the manager comes with that question of, should I do something? It may not be asking for approval. So the answer from the board might be what you just said, which is, you should do what you think you need to do. You know more, but we'll help you think it through if you'd like. You know, that, that, that if you would like us to be in that conversation with you, we can do that. And that might be a, a good segue into our, our next topic here, which is there, there is the specific question of what board members or boards can, can do to help. And so I, I think that this is, again, I, I believe this is so important that, that each of us wants to be useful. We want to be helpful. And so we're asking, how can I help? What can I do? So mm -hmm. beyond that idea of we could be in the conversation with you without usurping your authority, are there other things you have in mind that boards can do or board members can do to be useful? Yeah. Well, I think we started with the most important one that we call the foundation, which is staying steady in the work of governance. If the most you can do to help is just be a really strong, effective, efficient board, that is going to help your general manager off the bat. I think an important um, element of this topic is the ask part. So don't make an assumption that your GM doesn't need any help or that they do need help, right? Making sure that we're really asking and actively listening to what uh, the ever-changing need your GM has might be. So maybe your GM does not need help this week, but maybe next week they decide, I actually do need help. It brings us back to that, just being ready to respond to the changing uh, asks and the changing conditions. It's possible there are specific things that your board can help do under the purview of the general manager go above and beyond the role of a board member. I've heard of a lot of really amazing examples. Um, 
there was a co-op board that was maintaining the garden beds and the landscaping. So that was just like one thing that the GM does not have to think about. If there's something you can take off their plate that they feel is appropriate. Um, someone just shared earlier in the chat panel an example of um, going out and getting masks for the staff and sewing masks. And uh, again, just one less thing that the GM needs to think about. So it's possible that there are really specific things that you, you could be helping your GM with, but we don't want to get in the way, right? So you want to ask and just be attentive to listening to what those needs might be. Um, Michael, you had shared an example of something I thought was interesting because it was like really getting into the operation, but a GM that had said that they needed help responding to email because the, the deluge of member inquiries was really just too much for one person to handle and that that was a way that the board could step in and just, you know, be responding to email, um, understanding that it's really up to the GM what they feel is appropriate. And then I think the final thing I would say about it is if there isn't something in the store that you can help do, maybe there's a way your board could be helping your community right now, right? We are a co-op community. And I learned of a co-op that their board was lobbying their local government to help make grocery store workers emergency essential. So there's some create there a possibility for some creativity there. What can your board be doing to help your GM, your co-op, and maybe even your broader cooperative community if you guys have the capacity to do this point? But it does seem like the step one, don't get in the way. Step two, ask if there's a way to help. And if the answer is no, that's fine. There, there are other things the community needs. But if the answer is yes, be ready to step in there and do your best with whatever the manager has asked you to help with. Um, yeah. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to, to um, get into this topic here because sometimes communication is just at an operational level. But um, the, the, just this idea that the board might have a special role in communicating with member owners. Um, and I, just for the sake of time, Brittany, if it's okay, if I just mention a couple things really quick sure. and then encourage uh, folks who are participants to take this back to your board and say, is there something else we should or could do? Um, but your, your board could and should either as a whole or as individuals be ready to communicate with your member owners, to let them know how much you support the manager, the management work, how much you appreciate what the member owners are doing. Um, and in terms of this topic today of supporting the manager, one key to pay attention to is check together as a whole board, maybe at your regular board meetings, what are we talking about? What are the things we're saying? Brittany mentioned this earlier. You don't want your communications to actually then make it harder for the manager because you've said something that either wasn't quite true or didn't quite capture everything or, or because it was premature. Um, so as you're out there communicating, or before you're out there communicating, have that conversation with the board and manager. What are what are our talking points? What are the what are the things that we want to make sure we either do or don't uh, communicate? I don't know. Was there anything else there, Brittany, in, in terms of communication that that uh, you'd like to emphasize? Just tagging that idea of co-op holism. We're moving beyond board holism to just like whole community holism in our communication. I think is really critical. Yeah. Um, Brittany and Michael, I just mm -hmm. want to jump in really briefly um, just to mention there are a number of people asking about annual meetings, which is, of course, such a key mm -hmm. and critical way of um, um, communicating with member owners. Um, I dropped a link in the chat from Food Co-op Initiative that did a webinar on legal aspects of the awesome. annual meetings with a couple of co-op lawyers. And I just want to flag it for um, something that um, that um, there are co-ops working on that now. And I, I think we're, we're going to be scanning and trying to come up with some um, good practices and ways that people are getting those annual meetings done. But I just wanted to note, I know we're almost out of time, but I wanted to note that as something that's coming up repeatedly in the chat panel. So flag it for future follow-up. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie. And that's a good reminder for folks here today that um, Brittany and I are not at all trying to say that we've got all the answers and everything's here. There are a lot of other folks in the world who are coming up with great ways to support our co-ops and our co-op communities. So look for those answers elsewhere and, and feel free to contact Brittany or me or others of the Cluminate uh, team if you have further questions too. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna take a couple minutes to to wrap up here and then to send you all back into your 
communities to make the world a better place. Um, as, as I was uh, thinking about our work here this week, Brittany, what one thing that came to mind was the the definition of of cooperatives that we we form cooperatives to meet our common needs and aspirations. And those two words really really rang out for me that that in this moment of time, we have some common needs and they're mostly about survival, both on a personal level and on an organizational level. And so a lot of what boards can and should be doing is paying attention to that. Let's make sure we're meeting those needs up for survival. Let's get through this. And our aspiration is to maybe get through this in a way that makes us stronger, better on the other side, that we're, that we're more ready to live in that new world that's gonna be in front of us and that we don't do anything now that gets in the way of that. And, and so I was just uh, inspired by those words there. Maybe other folks will find other uh, inspiration from other co-op uh, language or words that you can use in your own board work or with your manager. Um, but I, I really wanna um, just again, thank folks for doing the work, for taking some time out to think about how to do it better and specifically, how boards can support the managers, um, that this is not the only thing, but critically important. So, so I wanna say thank you for that. And then leave it, Brittany, um, do you wanna say anything here in the closing? I think you said it beautifully, Michael, that the power of our co-ops is our community. And that's what we need to do right now is come together. And that's why we love co-ops and why we think they're the most resilient business model. So thank all of you for all the work that you do. Thank you guys for coming today. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye now.